Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Vampires. That's right, we're back again with another Guide to Vampires, and I need to say thank you very much to every single person who supported the world below and got in touch to confirm it and request a video. I now have quite a few videos to make, uh, but we ended up hitting over a thousand backers and over double our funding target, so I think we can safely say everything went well. Uh, thank you so much, and do keep an eye out for more videos to come. And before we get truly into the vampires, let me tell you about a new book that's being made. I'm always going to tell you about new games coming up. It's part of the purpose of this channel. We have Exalted 3rd Edition Abyssals on Indiegogo. It's crowdfunding right now. Uh, now, Abyssals, you might be thinking, Exalted, I'm a World of Darkness fan. I like deep personal gothic horror. Uh, where does Exalted apply to me? And you'd be wrong. Because Abyssals are the exalted type that was most closely matched to Wraiths in the original uh, exalted template. The design philosophy was that each exalted type would ha roughly have a World of Darkness equivalent. Now, admittedly, the editions of Exalted have changed severely since first edition and the initial concepts, but you can still see a lot of that World of Darkness DNA in the Abyssals. They are gothic, they are gory, they are ghoulish. And if you're a fan of the World of Darkness, specifically Wraith and Vampire, do check Abyssals out. You only need to get Exalted 3rd Edition and Abyssals, and you can play your horror games in creation. So do check out the campaign, which I have linked below. Now, with that said, the Ministry, the followers of Set as was. And just like with the Hakata video that I made recently, we're going to be talking a little about them from a design perspective and a, an in-universe perspective. And this is another one of those clans people tend to stumble over a little. Uh, because the concept isn't as, I guess, pure, you could say, as the Gangrel or the Nosferatu or the Toreador. The ministry is a little more muddled than that. So let's start from the design perspective. In original Vampire the Masquerade, they were, of course, the followers of Set, a cultish bloodline of vampires that all claim to descend from the same Egyptian god, antediluvian, known as Sutech or Set, and their primary objective, it seemed, in at least a couple of editions of Vampire, was to corrupt other vampires, to basically weaken their power bases and see them take a merry fall from morality. Now, that changed come revised edition to most, I would say mostly, mostly, uh, because, well, for a few reasons. One, yeah, that was an, an incredibly terrible and shallow character concept. I am the corrupter. I am the devil in your midst. Ultimately, and this is what happened with a lot of followers of set characters uh, and people trying to play them, no one would ever trust a setite. And there was a good reason for that. If your raison d'etre is to corrupt everyone around you <laughs> and betray and lie, then the followers of set are not a clan you're going to want to have round for dinner. Uh, at least not in the way I'm talking about. And so the revised edition of Vampire the Masquerade repositioned them somewhat as liberators from the structures of and strictures of the antediluvians, the Aeons, as they called them, that the followers of Set were, or for all intents and purposes, the people that would set you free from the shackles that had been placed upon you by your elders. Now, that was an interesting concept, explored through faith. But even with, and I'm a big fan of the revised edition clan book of the Followers of Set and the Dark Ages material for the Followers of Set, specifically for Dark Ages Vampire in Player's Guide to the Low Clans, uh, the Followers of Set concept became a little screwed up there. Because I think at face value, especially in things like the core book, they were still corruptors, deceivers. Uh, but dig in, and there was a little more to them than that. Now, I understand that for a deeply invested vampire fan, that's what you want. You want something beneath the surface. But sometimes, as we have found discussing stereotypes in the Hecata video, sometimes what you want is a very clear picture of what your character is at the forefront. <laughs> And I don't know that the followers of Set ever got that, at least not to a degree that the majority of players appreciated it. 
What also muddled things was the existence of the Bali, or Bayali, if you like, uh, who are demonstrably infernal vampires, and their intention likewise is to corrupt individuals and send them uh, plummeting down the morality track and into the jaws of hell. Was it so different to have a Setite doing it to a Bali doing it? Mm. Uh, the ideas got mixed up, and sometimes, in fact, there was a certain amount of uh, dancing on the head of a pin to explain how, no, no, when a, when a Setite corrupts you, it's because they're trying to free you. When a Bali tries to corrupt you, they're trying to enslave you, except then there was rewrites of the Barleys to, in some cases, such as a book I worked on, the V20 True Black Handbook, where the Bali are presented from an almost saviour mentality, which I never agreed with. I quite like them as pure evil. I know that may sound a bit bland to some of you, but I like there being an antagonist who you always know is going to be an antagonist. This is, if to use a and d ism your chaotic evil demon. But I digress. The followers of Set, in other words, had a problematic place in the vampire lineup. Uh, they also had a problematic regional lock on them, where the vast majority of Setites, it seemed, were in and around Egypt. This in itself is not problematic, but when you position a clan to be regionally locked, or at least uh, regionally centred, and the same thing happened with the Giovanni, same thing happened with the Asamites as they were. Uh, you restrict access to play. There's a good example of this, Cairo by Night, which is a very good city source book that very few people ever used to set a, set a game in Cairo. Why? Because the experience of living in Cairo, the experience of storytelling in Cairo, is very different to storytelling in your Western European, North American domains. And while it is excellent to show off domains from around the world, uh, it can be very intimidating to a storyteller to set a game in a place for which they have very little real-world context. So that was a great effort to try and make the setites more accessible. But still fell afoul of some of the issues we repeatedly see when trying to do geographical source books with all kinds of role-playing games. Anyway, anyway. So the Setites had a problem. Also, I mentioned the poll of popular clans. The Setites routinely danced with Giovanni at the bottom. <laughs> uh, and uh, in fact, the Asamites were consistently higher. Of the independent clans, it tended to flow somewhere like Asamites, Ravnos... Setites, Giovanni, with the Setites and the Giovanni switching backwards and forwards. I think the Asamites always had in their favour the idea of them being Diablerists and Diablery Hunters and a cool assassins, and people liked that concept. Uh, helped maybe by the wonderful portrayal of an Asamite, the Asamite, in Kindred the Embraced. Anyway, anyway. All these digressions aside... What this left me with as a designer for vo both V20 and V5 was a problem, because I wanted the followers of Set to be as interesting as I found the followers of Set. I've always loved the followers of Set. I've always thought it's, it's, they're one of my favourite clans, honestly. I like the idea of them not just being corruptors, but also being committed antiquarians, even Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones archaeologists, uh, the stereotype character, iconic character Hesher, is that kind of archaeologist, goes on adventures and fetches forbidden relics that he then delivers back to his clan for some reason, or keeps for himself. And I always liked that idea, but I also loved the idea of them being the clan of faith. And this is something that I introduced in Beckett's Jihad Diary, I think. Beckett's Jihad Diary and the V20 Dark Ages Tome of Secrets. Uh, so look it up if you haven't recently. 
Until then, the Setites were never known as the Clan of Faith. They were pretty much the Clan of Corruption. And yes, they had their nuances, but they were never just the Clan of Faith. And it's Tome of Secrets that first posits that they are. And the reason it posits that they are is because uh, pretty much since the Setites' inception, there have been different flavours of Setites. You've had the Jormundanga, the sort of Norse Setites, you've had the Witches of Echidna, I think you've had, oh, uh, you've had certain Voodoo uh, Setites as well. There's lots of different flavours of Setites, and they don't always involve snakes, but they often do, for some reason, despite the fact Set is not a snake. It's more of an Apep thing. I guess it's, again, the corrupter angle, and hence the confusion. The Serpent of the Garden of Eden, you've got the Edenites from uh, Constantinople, and so forth. So I wanted to present the Setites as being the spiritual centre of Vampire the Masquerade, rather than just being on the fringe corrupting everyone else. I wanted them to become the clan that other vampires go to when they are lacking their spiritual foundation. Uh, they act as counsellors, they act as advisors, but mainly on spiritual matters. Because yes, while they may be self-interested, and yes, while they may be in a horribly insular clan with their own objective, they are still masters of the spirit and spiritual advice. If I wanted to go to someone and inquire or plead, I need to know how to keep this beast under control. I know nothing of paths of enlightenment, but I can clearly see humanity is not for me. It should be the Setite that I go to for that advice. That was my vision, my thinking. And so that's how I positioned them at the end of V20 and going into V5. My initial design behind them was they would be the Clan of Faith. So you've got the Clan of Kings, you've got the Clan of the Rose, you've got the uh, Clan of the Hidden, you've got all these different clans that are pigeonholed into nice identifiable concepts. The Clan of Corruption is clearly antagonistic. The Clan of Faith can be antagonistic, but it can also be incredibly supportive. It can be the uh, last piece of wreckage in the sea that you cling to while the rest of the ship is sinking around you. And so with V5 and this idea in mind that the Setites were um, the clan of faith, the next question came, where do they get positioned in the game? And this is where we start getting into in-universe stuff. And I appreciate we've sort of dotted around the place. Of, I hope you can follow my train of thought here. Uh, as with m several of the clans, initially the ministry would, or I wrote the ministry to appear in the core book, the V5 core book. They ended up in the Anarch book. And that is a story. And again, not really breaking any NDAs. Uh, this has been discussed in other interviews, I believe. Initially, the V5 team, uh, not I mean the core team, the people, uh, I guess, employed at White Wolf, as was, were not keen on the Setites really making an, an appearance in V5. The same went for the vast majority of the independent clans. I think maybe the Banu Hakim were always going to appear, but the Ministry were not a popular choice. And so I made a pitch for the Setites, as they still were at this point, becoming a Camarilla clan. With the rise of the Second Inquisition, with the um, strengthening of the Anarchs, the departure of the Bruja, uh, the Setites could become a new pillar of the Camarilla. Camarilla felt weakened by the Bruja departure and they went looking around for allies. My idea was this. Yes, I know if you're familiar with V5, you'll know they're not in the Camarilla, but we'll get to that. Uh, my pitch was simply this. It's already been established in Revised Edition Vampire the Masquerade that the Setites were the eighth clan to receive an invitation to join the Camarilla. Uh, that was in, I think, Clan Book Setite Revised. They received an invitation and they never accepted it. They never accepted it because they didn't feel it was the right time. They f still felt the Camarilla were in the thrall of the Aeons, the Antediluvians, and their job, their objective was to serve Set, not the other malign gods, if you like. 
And so they never joined the Camarilla. But I started setting things up in Beckett's Jihad diary to the point where they would set it up. Because of the schism within the followers of Set clan, uh, where the various cults were splitting off into basically abandoning worship of Set and worshipping their own version of him. Um, but mainly because of the existential issue that is present in V5, such as the beckoning, such as the Second Inquisition. I thought it would be a perfect response, much like the clans of necromancy drawing together to form a little bubble, for the Setites to go to a place where there is an invitation outstanding. And the Setites have never had friends. They are not a clan that makes friends easily. But if there's a sect they can join, a sect that is looking for a new clan, then they could go in with a good offer, and say, we will be your spiritual centre. We will advise you. In this time of trial, in this time when your beasts are most taxed, we will be there to counsel them. We will be your ministry. Aha. And this is where the idea of the ministry started coming in, the idea that uh, they are on one level ministers in the religious sense, but they are also ministers, a ministry in the bureaucratic sense. They're a behind-the-scenes clan. They're counsellors, they're advisors, they are thinkers, they are planners, and, as we know, they're your spiritual centre. So, I thought ministry has a double meaning. I like the idea of the ministry from, I guess, the sense of a John le Carré novel where they are secretive types that work behind the scenes. They are the ministry. And so this was the double meaning behind the clan name or the cl clan revival. Plus, the fact that there was all these schisms going on set up in V20 where the clan was breaking down into multiple cults, that it made no sense for them to be called the followers of Set anymore. Additionally, and this is an out-of-character thing, I have spoken to a lot of players, and so this is purely anecdotal, but the initial inclination when you see a clan and the name follower is in the clan name is not, I want to play that character. People like to play characters from clans that feel like they have agency, like they can be dominant in social situations. If immediately you are signing up on the bottom rung of a cult, you are a follower of Set, you immediately feel like you've got some agency taken away. Now, that's not a uniform approach. Not everyone feels that way about the Setites, but enough people did that I thought, okay, they need a rebrand, essentially. So, that was my pitch. As you can anticipate by the fact that they are not in the Camarilla in V5, that pitch was not accepted. Well, initially it was. It was accepted. And so V5 was starting to get written with the Ministry supplanting the Bruja. And then one of my fellow authors on V5 suggested, well, I also think the Banu Hakim should join the Camarilla because that was set up at the tail end of Revised Edition. And I had no issue with this. Uh, I mean, they were being set up indeed mm -hmm. to join. And um, I do appreciate the phone just buzzed and that may have deafened all of you. I apologise if that is the case. Uh, so yes, they, uh, the Banu Hakim were being vouched for by one of the other authors. Plus, he said, in the Mind Eye Theatre version of Vampire, the Banu Hakim have been a Camarilla clan for quite some time. Why don't we pair up the Setites and Giovanni in the Independent Alliance, as per Mind's Eye Theatre, and the Banu Hakim can be the new entry? I was very much against the Independent Alliance. I don't like the idea of it conceptually. If it works for people LARPing, then great. Um, but uh, I don't see the connection there. I understand you could throw the same argument at me about why would the Naga Raja join the Giovanni or whatever. I've cover that in another video but for me the Setites and the Giovanni had no common ground and so I said no I'm not happy with the independent alliance I would like the ministry to join the Camarilla I don't mind the Banu Hakim joining the Camarilla and then another author said I think the La Sombra should join the Camarilla and this wasn't me. I know I wrote the La Sombra joining the Camarilla into Chicago by night. That was my responsibility uh, to to handle that. And I'm still happy with how I handled it. I will hasten to add. I know some people don't like it, but I like it. Um, 
And so now we had three authors on the project, fairly deep into the writing of V5, all pitching a different clan to join the Camarilla. And they couldn't all join the Camarilla. The Camarilla was supposed to be weakened in V5. Uh, it wasn't as... Um, well, I don't know if it's weak, but it's definitely a stricter elite. So at least that's the effect it's supposed to give off. And so if any old clan could just show up, then we had problems. Now, again, if you're familiar with V5, you know who wins this argument. We all had to write our pitch documents. And again, this was deep into the process. This is a brief window into the process of making V5. New ideas were being thrown at the wall a long way into the development process. And uh, that can help explain some of the decisions made, perhaps. Uh, and so I thought, and by this point, the ministry had already been accepted, I will add. I had had a meeting at Gen Con with a couple of members of the White Wolf team where I made the pitch. They said, OK, cool, go for it. And then the other writers started adding their ideas. And uh, as it turned out, um, the the team decided we want the Banu Hakim to tie into Mind's Eye Theatre, I think, and because they they felt like the Shadow Assassin type was a better fit. They wanted the La Sombra because no one would expect that. But that would be handled in a later book by Ch in Chicago by Night by me. The Ministry, that's when the team turned around and said, we never really liked the followers of Set. So no, we don't want them in the camera alone. Now that's not to say the Anarchs are a second string sect. I'm sure a lot of people think that way. But I said... Well, why don't we then have the Setites join the Anarch movement? Because right now, the Anarch, the Camarilla is gaining two... Well, has lost one clan, gained another. Um, if you deduct the Gangrel and the Bruja, they've been replaced by the Banu Hakim and the La Sombra. Why don't we move the Ministry to the Anarch? So now the Anarchs are uh, philosophy, might, and faith. See if you can break it down <laughs> between the three clans that nominally lead the Anarch movement. And they liked this. They said, yeah, actually, this is really cool. And you know what? Uh, in fact, I think the way one of them said it is, you know what would be really cool? Uh, because I was working with a lot of Swedish people. Uh, and that is exactly what they said. Um, you know what would be really cool if we put the uh, Setites in the Anarch movement uh, because they have wanted to take down the hierarchy uh, for since uh, since uh, they were invented. So uh, let's do that. So that's what we did. Uh, we put these <laughs> the Setites in the Anarch movement because, and I can't disagree with the logic. I think ultimately it was the right choice. The Setites, as a clan, are about destabilising existing hierarchies, structures, taking down organised religions, removing people's strict faith, and replacing it with a little more... Some, something a little more evangelis, uh, evangelical, if you like. Non-denominational, maybe. Um, which is all a ruse to get you into their cult. And so, yeah, the Anarchs were a very good fit, and I regret not thinking of it before. So the ministry ended up in the Anarch movement with the Bruja and the Gangrel. And so I wrote them up for the Anarch book with that in mind after scrapping what I'd written for the Camarilla. And in Metaplot sense, what happened in Universe is they did try and accept the invitation to join the Camarilla. Many of the Setite elders, back when they were still the followers of Set, met up with a couple of the Justicars of the, or Inner Circle, I think Justicars, of the Camarilla in a hotel in Paris. And that hotel suffers a terrorist attack. The hotel explodes. The vast majority of these elders and even a couple of Justicars are wiped out. The word in the Kindred channels very quickly is that was a Setite schism. The cause of that was a, was an internal Setite issue. The Setites say that wasn't us. We didn't blow our own elders up. Um, it was the Second Inquisition, this Inquisition that's now rising. And other people are casting about elsewhere. Some people are saying, well, clearly it's the Banu Hakim. The Banu Hakim have always hated the Setites. And wouldn't you know it, they're holding their own separate meeting in Odense in Denmark with Camarilla representatives right now in a kitchen in a hotel. 
you know, very non, very low key. And just as the Setites are rejected because of all the panic, the Banu Hakim are accepted. The truth behind it, as I wrote it, is in fact the Toreador representative had enlisted Toreador Archons to set the explosives. I even ran a small chronicle where this was the case. Why? Because the Toreador have known the Setites for as long as any other clan, and they know what masterful manipulators of people the Setites are. The Toreador were already feeling their presence being threatened in the Camarilla uh, with the rise of the Tremere. The Toreador used to be clan number two, Ventru one, Toreador two, and the Tremere were very close to becoming two before the whole Vienna thing happened. So the Toreador thought, you know what, we don't want a threat to our power base. We don't want new people hosting Elysia. We don't want people skilled in majesty, uh, presence, majesty being, a you know, four dots or whatever. Anyway, and so it's the Toreador that are behind it. But everyone's so busy looking for who's responsible, they never get blamed. And so the Setites do what they do. They took their ball, went home, and in fact didn't just go home, they joined the other team. And it wasn't the Setites, the Orthodoxy, that did it. The Orthodoxy who still want to join the Camarilla, but the vast majority, the rump of the clan, if you like, join the Anarch movement. And they divest themselves of the Setite name because they're aware that it is utterly corrupt. I mean, ironically enough, no one likes a Setite. Everyone knows about Setites. And so they become the ministry in the exact same way that I described earlier with the Camarilla. They are both bureaucrats and counsellors to the Anarchs. And you know something? The Anarchs probably need it more than the Camarilla because they have such a loose leash on their humanity and behaviour. They don't have a sheriff telling them what's right and what's wrong, even when those edicts are utterly incorrect. They are left to succeed or fail based on their own merits. And so, yeah, the Ministry act as a stabilising force within the Anarch movement. Who would have seen that coming? So, all of that said, that's some of the ideas behind the positioning of the Ministry in V5, why they are what they are. Uh, I appreciate, again, I don't know how much I succeeded on making them a more accessible clan, the idea of them being the clan of faith, the idea of them being the spiritual centre of Vampire the Masquerade, even when that spirit is horribly warped and deformed, they are still the spiritual centre. I like to think that they are still very good for that. Uh, but the I think they would have benefited a great deal from being presented. And I, I, I think the same thing, actually, for all of the uh, supplemental clans. A clan like the Ministry, even though the Anarch book was only one or two books removed from the core, would have benefited a huge deal from being in the core book. Presented as an equal between the Malkavians and the Nosferatu. Malkavian, Ministry, Nosferatu. Clan of the Moon, Clan of Faith, Clan of, you know, rats and sewage. Um... And if you present the Ministry as a normal part of the setting, that these are the vampires that in their struggle find faith. They find the only rock they can cling to is belief. That they can no longer believe in themselves, they can no longer believe in their instincts, they can no longer believe in science because they know themselves to be something of a supernatural nature. They cling to faith and they draw people to them who also need that faith. And ministers, they aren't going around terrorising people. They are cultivating cults. They are bringing people to them. They are feeding from a willing herd. They are making themselves into the leaders of people that they should have always been, instead of just being little pests pecking away at the sides of courts, trying to sow seeds of dissent. Who would allow a Setite in their court? But a minister, a minister has a purpose. A minister is useful. A minister can help stabilise a domain, can help draw a vampire back from Marseille, can maybe even cure white dumb, as we explore in one of the Let the Streets Run Red scenarios. So, 
Those are the ideas behind the ministry, the followers of Set, and where they are in V5. If I had to give a one-sentence description, and I know I've already done it, the ministry are the clan of faith. They are the spiritual centre of Vampire the Masquerade. They advise, they counsel, and they cultivate herds. I think that is a perfectly decent description and it's a place to go for especially in places like america there are a lot of religious people there are a lot of people that aren't just going to suddenly lose that faith as soon as they become uh vampires and there's a lot of religious people who aren't necessarily faithful aren't necessarily virtuous but definitely use the tool of religion as a club and the ministry are quite capable of doing that as well now we will see how that intersects with the La Sombra when I do a video on them, because the La Sombra are also a clan of faith of a kind, but where the ministry of the clan of faith, I would consider the La Sombra a clan of religion, uh, which is different. But we will get into that anon. Thank you very much for yet another long video watching, sticking with it. Uh, do tune in next time and do click the Abyssal's link below so you can get more World of Darkness via Exalted because that is where you go for your gothic, ghastly, Exalted types. Abyssal's. Do back it and thank you very much for watching.